Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 10, Lesson 12, Colonial Life. We're going to start by going over the key vocabulary words you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is compulsory, required by a law or a rule. Our next word is curable, able to be fixed or healed. Then we have the word imitated, copied, duplicated, mimicked. Then we have the word manufacture, to build, construct, create, or produce. Our next word is potential, possibility, capability, promise, or ability. And our last word is public, supported by and available to the community, free, out in the open, or relating to the people at large. We are now going to move into today's reading. You have learned about the many reasons people from all over Europe traveled thousands of miles across the Atlantic Ocean to establish and live in the 13 colonies. Kings, trading companies, and influential Englishmen all realized that North America had enormous potential. In other words, they all thought they could get rich there. Others wanted to start a new life, free of religious intolerance and persecution. People from England and other parts of Europe traveled to different regions for different reasons. Slowly, these regions and the colonies within them began to take shape. The southern colonies had warm weather and adequate rainfall. Small farms and large plantations began to dot the landscape. The large plantations had many enslaved Africans working on them. The economy in the south was based on farming cash crops such as tobacco, rice, and indigo. Tobacco, rice, and indigo were exported to England in the West Indies and sold by merchants there. Trade among the 13 colonies also began to grow. The soil in the New England colonies was not as suitable for farming. There were some small farms, but due to the abundance of forests, timber became an important trade good. Over in England, many of the forests had been cut down by the time the colonies were established. So timber, to make ships and homes, was exported to England. Other colonies also needed timber to build fishing and trading ships, homes, and barrels. Farming was a main source of income in the middle colonies. Wheat was grown so abundantly that this region had a special name. Mills were built and the wheat produced was ground into flour and sold to other colonies. Large amounts of flour were also sold to England and its colonies in the West Indies. Settlers from around the world came to this region, resulting in a wide variety of cultures within the middle colonies. Can you imagine what it was like to grow up back then? Let's find out what life was like in the English colonies. In the early days, only boys who lived in Massachusetts had to go to school. The first schools were one-room schoolhouses. Boys of different ages learned reading, writing, and math. Sometimes the older boys helped to teach the younger ones. In 1647, a law was passed in Massachusetts that required every town with 50 or more families to support an elementary school. The towns with more than 100 families had to support a grammar school where boys would learn Latin to prepare for college. This was the beginning of public education in America. Over time, every colony began to provide a basic public education. The very first colony, Harvard, was founded in New England in 1636. In 1693, the second college, the College of William and Mary, was founded in Virginia. William and Mary was named after King William III and Queen Mary II of England. Some boys attended private schools and others were educated at home. Puritan girls were taught to read so they could read the Bible. For many children, the main part of their education was learning a skill so that they could grow up and support a family. For girls, that meant learning household skills, household skills such as cooking, keeping a vegetable garden, sewing, making candles, and raising children. Some girls might learn to become dressmakers. For boys, farming was one of the main occupations. There were many different kinds of apprenticeships, too. Boys as young as 11 years old would, ser would serve as apprentices and learn a skill from an experienced artisan. They could learn to be shoemakers, blacksmiths, carpenters, shipbuilders, printers, surveyors, millers, merchants, and glassmakers, among other things. Boys could also train to become lawyers, doctors, or teachers. Boys would often leave home at the age of 11 and go to live as apprentices with the skilled artisans who were training them. Their workday was usually about 12 hours long. Apprentices were provided with food and a place to live, but they were not paid. Apprenticeships usually lasted for several years. At the end of their apprenticeship, they would join an existing business or start their own. Even young children had lots of chores to do. If you lived on a farm, and many people did, you would gather firewood, tend to the farm animals, milk the cows, collect eggs from the chickens, make candles, plant and harvest vegetables, and carry water from the well. 
Almost all of your food came from your farm. All of this had to be accomplished without the luxuries of electricity, indoor plumbing, or central heating or air conditioning. Life in the colonies was not all work and no play. Because children spent a large part of their day doing chores, they often found ways to make a game out of their work. For instance, if they were gardening, they might have a game of hide-and-seek after they finished weeding the garden or picking the vegetables. If they were carding wool, carrying firewood, or churning butter, siblings might race one another to see who would finish first. Children might also sing songs or exchange stories and riddles as they worked. When their chores were finished, they played games like blind man's bluff, hopscotch tag, and a form of jacks using rocks. There were no toy stores, so colonists made toys from the things they had in their homes or farms, such as dolls from corn husks or rags. If they had some wood, leather, or string left over, they might make a toy out of it, such as a top or spinner, or a game like the familiar cup and ball game. Colonists made board games they could play, too. One favorite, one favorite toy might be a hoop left over from barrel making. Children would turn the hoops on their sides and roll them with a stick through the streets. Religion played a key role in the development of many of the colonies. Christians often read the Bible to their children, and children were required to memorize Bible passages. For Christians in New England, attending church was the most important thing they did. In fact, if you were a Puritan, it was compulsory. Puritans worshipped in a meeting house. Sermons could last for several hours. If you fell asleep during the service, there was sometimes someone assigned to wake you up. That person had a long pole with feathers on the end. If someone fell asleep, he tickled the, slipper, the sleeper's chin with the feathers. As you learned, in the early days of the colonies, most people produced the food they ate. Corn was a very important crop to the colonists, as it was to many Native Americans. Colonists used corn in a variety of ways. There was cornbread, corn cake, boiled and fried corn, corn syrup, and corn on the cob. Besides farming, some colonists also hunted and fished. The colonists learned to harvest regional fruits and berries, and they used them in their cooking for seasoning and pies. Apparently, colonists had a very sweet tooth. Historians have, re historians have recorded stories about how colonists loved hard candies, pies, and puddings. As the colonies grew in size, towns became large cities. Boston, New York, Philadelphia, and Charleston became the largest. The architectural style of each region often imitated or copied the European countries where many of the colonists originated. There were many red brick English style homes in New England. Dutch style wooden houses with sloping roofs in the mid-Atlantic and French style farmhouses with wide porches and French doors in the southern region. In addition, Charleston architecture has a Caribbean influence because many settlers arrived there from the English island of Barbados, of Barbados in the Caribbean Sea. The streets of these towns and cities became busy with horses, wagons, and people. Not everyone worked as a farmer, artisan, or apprentice. There were many wealthy people who lived in very fine houses in these large cities. Their homes contained only the best furniture, silver, china, and fabric shipped from England. In the early days of in the early days of the colonies, people relied heavily on imported goods from England. As the years went by, the colonists began to manufacture or produce some of these things themselves. However, the English Parliament still controlled how much manufacturing the colonists were allowed to do. The English did not want to lose the money they made by selling their goods to the colonists. The wealthy colonists paid attention to English fashions, and even on the hottest days could be seen wearing the most elaborate clothing made of the finest materials. Men wore lace stockings and ruffles. They carried swords and powdered their hair. Women wore big, puffy, many-layered dresses and towering hair designs when they were in fashion. These less affluent colonists, those less affluent colonists who did physical work, wore clothes that were made from simpler materials. They often made their own clothes or wore clothes given to them by others. Communication between the colonies was difficult. Most roads were nothing more than wagon trails. Although, in the larger cities, there were a few established highways, ships traveled up and down rivers and along the coast to bring goods and news from far away. Written communication was one of the only ways of sending and receiving messages. But letters could take weeks, if not months, to arrive. Frequently, letters would go missing. Medicine then was basic, and people died of diseases that are quite curable today.
Women gave birth at home with the help of midwives because they did not have the medical care we do today. Sometimes women died in childbirth, and many babies died before reaching their first birthday. However, life away from the crowded European towns and cities was somewhat healthier. You may now move on to Unit 10, Lesson 12, Google Form.